Hey guys, Justin with AmericanMuscle.com and today we're taking a closer look at and installing the CVF 3-inch catted downpipe available for all 2015 and newer EcoBoost Mustangs. Now you should be considering the CVF downpipe for your EcoBoost if you'd like to go with the most affordable 304 grade stainless option currently on the site to help increase the power and sound out of your ride. When talking features here with the CVF option, part of it will be the affordable price point given the premium materials, but we'll talk more about that here in the next block. Now, what we will talk about is the added sound and power you can expect from bolting something like this up to your EcoBoost ride. Now, as you heard with our sound clips, you'll hear a little bit more out of the stock system, both volume and turbo noise wise, but those gains really become apparent when you pair this downpipe up with an aftermarket exhaust. Now, it's not gonna be as aggressive or contribute as much as say a catless option might, but I would still expect a small bump nonetheless. So breaking out my Wake the Neighbor scale, I would add one level of volume to whatever exhaust you're adding this to. So what I mean by that is if the stock exhaust is say a one out of five, then adding the CVF will bring that up to a two out of five on the Wake the Neighbor scale and so on. And same can be said for power. While owners should expect a little bit more power out of the CVF setup, it will be minor in comparison to an off-road or catless option. Option. So again, expect minor gains thanks to the larger diameter of the tubing itself, along with the high flow cap, but nothing too crazy. I would say if we had the ballpark power gains, high single digits, low double digit gains without running any tuning, and that's another nice thing to point out here, guys. You can bolt this up and go without the need for any custom or can tuning. Uh, now, sure, adding a tune would certainly maximize some of your gains, especially if you've added other modifications, especially on the EcoBoost platform, which absolutely loves to be tuned. Now, moving into construction, and again, this could easily be a feature. And the reason I say that is because of the materials used. The CVF is gonna use premium 304 grade stainless steel for the build, which is one of the best of the best when we're talking about things like corrosion resistance and long-term durability. Now, helping that durability even more will be the full TIG welded design here, guys, throughout the three inch mandrel vent tubing, complete with the necessary O2 bungs, of course, and adapters needed for a relatively easy install. Now, again, this is a catted option, as you can see right here, guys. So the CVF is including their 200 cell high flow cat so just something to be aware of there now because you are getting that solid material in the 304 grade stainless steel typically companies are going to have zero problems offering a lifetime warranty and that is the case here as well with the three inch downpipe from cvf now price point again for this option as we stated earlier is very appealing because at the time of this video you're looking at the most affordable catted option that's gonna boast full 304 grade stainless steel throughout. And it's gonna come in right around that mid $400 price point. Again, you're not touching that on the site currently at this time for anything else that's 304 grade stainless. Uh, so this is certainly appealing in that regard. Install according to the site will get a very strong one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, taking you at least an hour to get everything in place from start to finish. But now let's throw it out to the shop. Let's check out our detailed walkthrough and tool breakdown. The tools you'll need for this project are an impact and or a ratchet, a long extension, a universal joint, a 13 and a 15 millimeter socket, a 14 and a 22 millimeter wrench and or an O2 sensor removal tool, an exhaust hanger removal tool, and some anti-seize. Hi everyone, today we're installing a catted downpipe on our Mustang, so let's get started with the uninstall. All right, first thing we wanna take note of is you wanna make sure before you start on this that your engine is absolutely cold. You do not wanna be working on a hot engine because these exhaust pieces can be very, very hot and they will cause serious burns if you touch them. So once you're sure that your engine is cold, then we can go ahead and disconnect the O2 sensor up front and take off the outer nut on the stud for the exhaust manifold. So to do that, our connector, you're gonna follow your O2 sensor and then follow it up to the harness and then we'll unclip the harness and get that out of the way and then we'll take off that first nut. So here's your front O2 sensor. So we're just gonna follow that cable up and you'll see that it's clipped in to this harness right here. 
We're just gonna go ahead and disconnect that. And then all you have to do is press on the release clip on the connector and pull it apart. Now we can just get that O2 sensor out of the way. And then what we're gonna do is there's two studs in the manifold and they've got 15 millimeter nuts on them, one in the front here and one on the inside. So we'll go ahead and take the outside one off first. All right, there's your first nut. Now, because the space is limited up here, I like to get the second nut from the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and lift our car up. Now you will need either a floor jack and some jack stands to get up underneath there, or like in our case, we've got ours on a lift. All right, now to get this inside nut off of the exhaust stud here, I'm using a long extension with a swivel joint on it and our 15 millimeter socket. And we're gonna run that extension right up alongside the transmission to be able to get in there and get our socket on that nut. So now we'll go ahead and... All right, and once you've got your nut off there, now we can go ahead and disconnect the harness from our trailing O2 sensor here. And again, it attaches to a harness that's push pin into the transmission. So we're just going to push in on the release tab and disconnect that. Now we'll go ahead and move and we'll disconnect, loosen up the nuts on our exhaust clamp here, and then we'll remove the bracket that's connected to it. So now we're loosening up this front clamp here that holds our downpipe through the resonator. And we use our 15 millimeter socket. And just loosen that up. Now we'll go ahead and remove our hanger here from our isolator using our exhaust hanger removal tool. So we'll just clamp that on to the end and squeeze that through and get it out of the way. All right, now we're gonna remove the two 13 millimeter bolts here on this front bracket that holds our catalytic converter to the transmission. And then we'll be able to drop that pipe down and get it out of the way. So we'll use our 13 millimeter socket to remove these bolts. Now with our two bolts out of the way, we can go ahead and just lower our downpipe. With our downpipe out of the way, what we can do now is go ahead and remove our two O2 sensors to transfer them to the new downpipe and also to remove this bracket that we left on there when we took it out of the car. So let's go ahead and get our O2 sensors out first. And to use, do that, we're gonna be using a special O2 sensor removal tool. As you can see, it's got a cutout in the, in the side of the socket there to go around our harness. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can always use a standard 22 millimeter wrench. Just be careful because they may be tight, very tight, and you don't want to strip those heads of those nuts as they're coming out. So let's go ahead and get our trailing O2 sensor out first. Now, the other thing you want to make sure of is that you don't get these confused and swap places on them. One way you can tell is the front one has a green covering over the wires, and it's got a large connector. The trailing O2 sensor has black covering and it's got a small connector on it. So let's go ahead and get these out.
Now we'll go ahead and remove this bracket using our 13 millimeter socket on the two nuts here and we'll get that out of the way so we can transfer it over to our new pipe. Now we'll get our new pipe up here and get that stuff transferred over. Now to transfer our O2 sensors into our new pipe, you'll notice that the pipe does come with these plugs in each end, and that's to prevent damage to the threads while shipping. So what you wanna do is use your 22 millimeter, loosen those up, and then go ahead and remove those plugs. Now we can go ahead and install our O2 sensors. And before you install these, it's always a very good idea to use some anti-seize on the threads of your O2 sensor, just in case something comes up later. Maybe you've got uh, a defective O2 sensor and need to replace it. Using the anti-seize on those threads right now will prevent you from having very big frustration levels when you have to remove these later on. So we just put a little bit on the threads, doesn't take a whole lot, and then we can go ahead and screw these in. Now, you want to be very careful when you screw these in because it is very easy to get these cross-threaded or stripped when you're putting them in, even, even doing it hand tight. So there's one, and we'll do our real one, and we'll go ahead and tighten those up. And now we can go ahead and reinstall our bracket that we took off earlier. So when it's in the engine like this, you want to make sure that the bracket is going to line up correctly when you go to bolt it to your transmission. So you also notice that this one's a little different from the one that came off the factory. The factory one had the studs built in, the new one does not, but they do provide you with bolts and nuts. Now the other thing is that you notice there's not a whole lot of room to get your nuts inside here. So what I recommend doing is putting your nuts on a piece of tape and then you can feed it underneath the bracket, line up the threads in the hole and the tape will hold it in place while you put your bolts through. So now we'll go ahead and install our bracket with the supplied nut and bolt. And then once you've got it on, you go ahead and remove your tape. And you wanna try and get as much of the tape out as possible because it is gonna get very hot and you don't want it to burn. So once you've got your tape out of the way, you can go ahead and use your 13 millimeter socket and a 13 millimeter wrench and just snug it up. You don't want to make it tight right yet, just so you've got room to move it when you actually get it installed. So that's good enough right there. It's not going to fall off. Now we can go ahead and get this installed on our car. Now the original donut gasket for the downpipe may still be in your exhaust manifold for the turbo, which ours is. So you're going to want to take that out. And the kit comes with a new flat washer gasket that we're going to slide up in there. And we'll just slide this over the studs like so. And now we can go ahead and lift our pipe up into place. Now you're going to be reusing the original exhaust nuts. 
So we just go ahead and slide this up into place. Over our gasket. And we'll just kind of hand tighten our bolt up there at the top. And we'll go ahead and attach our bracket here. Again, using the original hardware. Not tightening it down just yet, just to give us some room to adjust until we get everything put together. Now we can go ahead and reconnect our trailing O2 sensor. Snap that into place. Now we can go ahead and connect the rest of our pipes to our exhaust. Now with our downpipe installed, we can go ahead and install our flex pipe. And we're gonna be using this band clamp that comes provided in the kit. Now you'll notice by looking at the band clamp that there are two different sizes on the ends. So the larger size is gonna go on your flex pipe, like so. And then the other end will go on your downpipe. Now with that in place, we can go ahead and install our curved pipe using the supplied clamp as well. So we just slide our clamp over the pipe, insert it into our flex pipe, and now we can go ahead and insert the hanger into the isolator. Now, once we've got that in place, we can go ahead and connect this to our stock system using the original clamp. Now that we've got everything hooked up, we can go ahead and push it all into place and snug it up from the bottom. And then we'll go ahead and put on our nut and connect our leading O2 sensor. So we use our 15 millimeter socket and push this up into place and then just snug it down. All right, now we'll go back up top and put the nut and the O2 sensor together up on top. So now we'll go ahead and install our outside nut on the stud. And we'll just snug that down with our 15 millimeter socket. Now we're not gonna tighten this all the way yet because when dealing with these types of gaskets, you wanna make sure that you tighten them down as evenly as possible. So we're just gonna snug this up. And then we'll go ahead and reconnect our O2 sensor harness. Tuck it back into place. Now we can go back underneath and finish tightening everything up. All right, so once we've got our studs up there and the nuts installed, we'll just go ahead and tighten them up with our 15 millimeter socket. And we're using our extension and our swivel socket as well. Now, like I said, you kind of want to make sure that these get tightened evenly, so we're going to also get the outside nut all right once we've got those tight now we can move on to the rest of the system all right now that you can go ahead and adjust your alignment on all of your pipes down here, make sure that they're where you want them. And then we'll start from the front. We'll go ahead and tighten down the band clamp using our 15 millimeter socket and a 14 millimeter wrench. And 
we tighten up our last two clamps here. And lastly, we go ahead and tighten up our bracket that holds our downpipe to the transmission. Now using our 13 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and tighten this bracket up. All right, now that you got everything tightened up, you can go ahead and start the car up, check for any exhaust leaks, any rattles. There should not be any if you've got it lined up correctly, and then you're ready to take it for a drive. And that wraps up our review and install of the CVF 3-inch stainless steel catted downpipe for the 2015 and newer Mustang EcoBoost. Thanks for watching, and remember, for all things Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com. <music>